morning. I want to thank uh, everyone that helped on Friday with our harvesters. We had, uh, there were five of us there, Jesse, Wanda, Derek, uh, Dennis, and myself were there, and we served about 90 families, isn't that right, Wanda? 90. So it was a good, we got done before the rain started, so that was, it was just kind of misty, drizzly when I, on my way home, so. That was good. I think the rest of your announcements are in your um, information that you have either received. I'm glad some of us have remembered our time change for those of us that live in this part of the country. Uh, for those in Arizona, bummer, y'all didn't have to change your time, but um, we are grateful to be here even with the wind and the rain today that we're having, so um, we get thanks for that. Uh, keep uh, Donna in your prayers. Uh, she took a little fall the other day. She's okay. Um, but she took a little fall, and she isn't going to drive until she gets checked out at the doctor and that kind of thing. So just kind of keep her in your prayers as we go through this week. Um, so that happened on thurs Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. Um, so just kind of keep her in your prayers this week. I think everything else is in our bulletin. So let us stand as we begin with our brief word of confession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and earthly magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not left you with our whole heart. We have not left our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us. And for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing hymn number 249 in the gold book.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their enemies. They loathed all good and withdrew in their gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Grace, we have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated 
show of the, the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good things, which God prepared in advance for us. Creatures. 
carry it. Get over it and accept it. And sometimes we want to live in that veil of darkness because then no one can see what I do. Maybe no one will notice that I'm sinful. There's only one problem, there we are. By nature of being human. And yet God says, you are not thrown into the abyss. You are not cast out. Because God still loves you. He sent a son to die that you may live and have eternal life. Now I know snakes are not my bestest friend. I really don't like snakes very well. Although sometimes they're kind of you know, kids at camp have gotten me to hold them and touch them. But I really don't like them. They're not like a puppy dog that they'll lick you or a kitty that purr against you. Snakes are kind of cold and non-affectionate. That's the image that is used. And we know that in the Genesis story, that's exactly what happened, is that it was the slimy little snake who tricked Eve. And yet, Adam and Eve could have said no. It is Moses who said, yeah, God said, Moses, put the snake on a stick. Impale him high that all those who look to the snake will live and be cured. I don't know, has anyone ever looked at the medical insignia? It's normally on most of your prescriptions in your doctor's offices. Have you ever noticed what it is? Has anyone ever noticed? It's a snake. The medical insignia is a snake. But it's not a snake then of bad things. Even though I don't like them, I just do not have them around. But Jesus took the place really of a slimy snake in some ways and was raised up on another pool and was told he took all of our stuff with him. He took all the bad stuff with him on that pole that he was raised up on. As he was raised up on the cross, he took it all. That you and I can have eternal life. That you and I can look at that cross and look even at the medical insignia and know that there is hope, and that there is life giving, not life taking. God did that. He gave up his son who was unblemished and untouched from sin, so that you and I, who are sin filled every day of our life, can live eternally if we believe. Now, those who do not believe will live in the darkness and will not see the light of what comes. It is about believing and then doing as we are called to do. This text, in some ways, doesn't maybe want to propel us outward. Although, really, it should. It should propel us to say that no matter what you have done, you are still God's child. On Thursday at the food pantry, one of our clients, when she came in, she sat down and she said, Pastor Cindy, I lost your car. I wanted to call you. I gave her another car. And she dug in her purse a little bit, and she handed me a bag, like a jewelry bag. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't, no. And she said, no, I made this for you. It was a sun catcher with a dragonfly. It's so pretty. Although I'd like to have some sun to look at colors right now. Since then, I have any sun to really look at it for. But, and we talked about it. And she said, you're the one person 
who I've been able to tell my story to and not be put down. There should be other people listening to her. There should be other people that we can talk to and hear the story of God's grace and life. Ron had the experience of handing another cross to another employee at Landles. Put it in her hand. She came back to him and she's like, you have no idea what that meant. And Ron said, you know, my wife is the pastor at the church. She said, I know right where it's at. I've seen the sign. Someone listen long enough to hear the story of brokenness that we have. Listen and didn't condemn it. Because in all reality, each one of us could look at each other and say, oh, you're just so full of whatever. And I'm not going to like you anymore because you're not as good as. That's not what God tells us to do. See, when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he would die to give us eternal life, says, I want you to come to me, my children. I want you to know the gospel in miniature. I want you to know the story of the donkey and the praying hands. I want you to be the words of comfort to those who hurt, those who are alienated, those who are not welcomed in many places to come to this place to hear the story of grace. So that's really what this is all about, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, and because of his sacrifice, you and I have eternal life, no matter what. No matter what we do, how we do it, we will have that right. But it doesn't mean we just sit and do nothing. It means that we get out and we share the story. I have to say, we're at a time in our church life, churches across the world that are under siege. We are and will be canceled if we are not careful. If we don't start telling the story of Jesus to everyone, we will be canceled. The story is too good for you and me to let go of. It's not what God asks. He wants you and me to go forth to share the story. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. That's why we gather on Sunday, though, is to say, I'm sorry for those things done and things left undone, for maybe not making the phone call that we should have made, could have made, it was on the list, but we forgot about. Not sending the card and saying, hey, thanks for all that you've done. For not doing as God asks you and me to do. As his children, given this gift of life, we have one life. We make the difference. And we can make the difference in other people's lives if we'll just do it. I feel like the Nike commercial. Just do it. Even if we mess up, we've done something. I think it was St. Francis of Sisi said, you know, to sing loudly and boldly, even if you can't sing, because at least we've made a joyful noise of some kind to someone. 
Well, maybe for you and me, that's what it's all about. But we have to proclaim from the highest mountain, from the lowest valley, the story of Jesus. Can we take our story, the miniature story, that God so loved the world, the one that is on every foot, at every football game, on a sign, for God so, John 3, 16, like everyone knows it, yes, for God so loved the world. Can we take the donkey and say, here's the reason the donkey's important, or here's the great hands. Or maybe it's a cross in your pocket that you can grab hold of at those moments those moments that we need it most. God is here for you and me. He has forgiven each of us. And as long as we live in the light and we look to the light and look up to God, up on that cross, and look up to Him, even up on the... Yeah. Even up there on the window... That's where we look. That's where we go. Even on the moments that we're feeling kind of not so good. That's the beauty of having a church that's left open all the time. Is that people can come to this space whenever they need to without question. That's the reason we do it. It's all about Looking to the light and living in his light, even when we fail. Amen. We will sing hymn number 448. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, this day we pray for all of our world. But we continue to hold all who suffer with COVID and all who are working in health care and all who are on the front lines throughout the world in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our country to be with our leaders and to help them make wise decisions throughout our land. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our community that our leaders will continue to have strength in these times. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer from illness, for Stan and Larry, Debbie and Donna, and all others that we lift up in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for each of us. Be with us to continue to guide us and walk with us, hear us, and lead us. In, uh, in, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing, Create in Me.
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.